Hi guys, so tonight I'm going to be doing a video tutorial showing you uh, how to go about using Onshape, which is a CAD parametric modeling program. Uh, it's totally web based, which is why it's really useful, um, and you can use it as an education account, which is what I'm doing here. So the features that you see here are within an education account, and what I'm modeling is with my uh, year 10 engineering or design and technology students is a uh, an articulated lamp. Currently, we're making it out of wood. Uh, and I'm looking at putting a, an acrylic top onto it. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow along to this tutorial using Onshape and I'm going to try and do it in one hit. So it'll be quite a long video so be prepared to pause, rewatch sections of it and skip ahead to areas where you've maybe covered things in the past before. Um, I will treat you as though you have used Onshape before and give you some key concepts along the way but this is not an advanced tutorial. However, it's very much, if you're not sure about how to use the basics, you might want to go and have a look at another tutorial first of all. So what we're making today is going to be um, something along the lines of, bear with me, this, this lamp. And as I say, at the moment, we're working with woods in order to learn skills of marking out and um, dimensioning and drilling and shaping and stuff. But this could be made out of aluminium. It could be 3D printed all sorts of stuff. I've spent a bit of time tonight trying to work out how to make this top which is a uh, sheet metal although actually I'm making it look like a piece of acrylic and we'll make something like this. I don't think it will come out exactly like that. I've got two methods under my belt at the moment so I'm sure there's lots of other good methods as well but I will be doing that part last so you might want to have a look towards the end of the video if you're purely on that folded uh, metal shape, but I'm going to begin by making one of these components. This project is very much about standard or standardized components And so I'm going to be making one of those components that we are then using twice uh, And then I'm going to be making one of these components which we are then using twice uh, And then I'm going to be locking that together into an assembly So that's kind of like the plan for it. We will then maybe look at some extension activities at a later date So I'm going to be working in a part studio when you open on shape, this is what you'll see first of all. So a reminder, in virtual space, it's infinite. It could be really confusing. So we often look at work planes. Front is forward and back. Right is left and right. And top is up and down. Um, those are also, if you think about it in terms of axes, that would be your X, your Y, and your Z. You can see those work planes over there. And at times, you might want to toggle them on and off by hiding them, <coughs> hiding their visibility. Uh, Pretty much all of CAD modeling is, is based around a couple of key principles at a basic level, which is extrusions based on sketches. So once you can do a sketch, you can turn that into a three-dimensional object by extruding it. After that, there's various things you can do as well, but, but it's basically learn that process and you will go far with CAD. So I'm going to start with a sketch and I'm going to be sketching on the right work plane. So I go to sketch. Then I select my right work plane and then I press N on my keyboard, N for normal. That will view me straight onto it. So that's a really useful keyboard shortcut. I'm then going to use the rectangle tool up at the top left here and I'm going to drag out a rectangle. I quite often make a point of avoiding this central point because it will try and constrain to that. It annoys me sometimes so I actually draw without that being highlighted. You might prefer to do it differently. Right, now I'm going to dimension this. I'm going to make this 100. And I'm going to make the width of this component 20 millimeters. Okay, so it's 100 by 20. I'm thinking actually that looks quite long. I'm going to make that 80 by 20. We'll see how it goes. 80 by 20. Um, we don't want to make this overly long. These dimensions are in millimetres. If you find that it doesn't look like this or it looks really big, just double check. Up and There's three lines up on the top left. Quite often, students need to choose workspace units and double check that you're working in millimetre. If you find you're working in inches, change it immediately. Right. So in my sketch, 80 by 20. Now, I've got a choice. I could either round these corners off in my extrusion, in my features afterwards, but I'm going to round them off within my sketch and I'm going to click on the corner. It's asking me to what the radius is. Now remember this has a width of 20. If I give that a radius of 10 and press enter, 
that means that radius that curve is going to come into the halfway point which is quite handy I'll do the same thing there and now the bottom as well and you'll notice that it holds its previous information green tick happy days we are there now I'm using the right mouse button in order to view around I find that really useful and remember again we can press N for normal to view straight onto anything so that sketch is pretty much done I could add some holes in there but we'll add those in a minute so I, my sketch now appears over on the left now if you're someone who's really organized you might actually rename that sketch as something I'm not going to do that now here's my sketch I'm going to extrude it click on the extrude button and then click on the on the profile now look, look at this right click I also get the option of extrude and new sketch etc so remember to use your right mouse click to access some of these as a keyboard shortcut right I'm gonna make these 16 millimeters thick that extrusion is 16 mil now that works for me there's no reason why it's 16 mil and remember with this if you want to update your document you can right click my extrude is over on the left and I can edit so if I want to make changes let's say I find out it doesn't fit after a while and I want to change it to 12 I can make that update in my extrusion at any time it's hidden over there and this is where if you are again very organized you might rename your extrusion I'm not gonna I am gonna edit it so it is 16 there okay so there's the beginning of my component part again if you just remember what I'm building here I'm building this light I'm making this part here okay so now next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut out the the joint and I'm gonna do that by doing a sketch instead of on a work plane this time I'm gonna choose the side of the object or the face of the object the face of the part uh, so I go sketch the computer says where do you want me to do the sketch I choose the side and I press N for normal view straight onto it now because I'm cutting I'm going to actually create a rectangle that is sitting out there in space and I'm going to want it to be hovering on that middle line okay and on shape gives me these little previews about where it's going to lock onto I'm going to deliberately avoid clicking on that point there I'm going to go a little bit below it and drag out but I don't know whether you noticed when I did that I made sure I was locked to that middle point although I was a bit lower if you get it wrong delete it and try it again okay so my rectangle hasn't actually got any dimensions on it but it is 8 mil in from the left and 8 mil in from the right remember that was a 16 diameter there or 16 thickness I locked into the middle which means that it's 8 there however mm -hmm. What I do want to do is to position the bottom of my rectangle in relation to this line here which is the start of my curve so I'm going to go to my dimension tool up at the top and I'm going to click where I'm measuring from I'm going to click where I'm measuring to and then pull out that dimension <coughs> and I'm going to change that to 10 and watch what happens to the line so that's where it was coming from that's locked it's now measuring down 10 if I just 3d that a little bit for you you can see that line is only it's literally where the curve begins but it's a convenient place for me to do that um, that dimension from I'm gonna press N for normal so I'm viewing onto it again and I'm gonna do the same thing but this time I'm gonna come down on the opposite side okay so I'm gonna just hover around until it gives me a preview of where I'm going better choose a tool first hey rectangle tool hover around there it's locking into the middle but I want to be up here somewhere click drag out to the right I'm not worried about how big my box is I'm worried about where it's positioned because I'm only going to use the corner of it so again because I locked it into the middle it is 8 mil in but what I do want to do is I want that line there to be 10 mil away from where that curve starts okay so basically we've got the same thing top and bottom you'll see why in a minute and then I green tick it that's the end of that sketch so if I just 3d that you can see that both those drawings although they're uh, they're separate rectangles they're actually the same sketch they are sketch too 
And if I made a mistake, if I've clicked out of it, I can always right click on Sketch 2 and go Edit, N, and make any changes. Okay, that's always sitting there ready for me to do that. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually cut away part of this component using my sketch and using my extrude tool and remember you can access that sorry you can access those by hovering over and going to extrude so extrude here's a mistake people will make make sure you pick up both bits that's kind of cut a bit where it's part of a, a, another object it's trying to be clever and trying to cut that away I actually want to collect connect that and that part of that rectangle so that one and that one. It'll make sense when you're doing it. Now obviously what I want to do is I want to remove material at the moment this is adding. I'm going to click on remove. Sometimes it'll highlight red and go what do you mean I don't know where you're going. If it does that you might want to flip it around. There you go so sometimes it might start like that but you can flip it around with that arrow there. It's not really that important how far this goes is it? Because so long as it's cutting that away it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to just pull that through. I could go do all sorts of things down here, but that works for me, so I don't need to. Right Now, there's my part. Next thing to do with this is to add the hole in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to do a sketch. I'm going to choose the side of this object here. And I'm going to go N for normal. Then I'm going to go to my circle tool. And I'm going to hover around here looking for that point. And then I'm going to click. Now, this one doesn't want to pick up this circle because that's on the other side. But what it will do is I can get it in the center line still. And then I can dimension it afterwards. You notice that I haven't dimensioned it. Sometimes you might dimension as you're going. I actually prefer to put my dimensions on afterwards. And I'm going to make that one 5, press enter. So that was the dimension tool. Click on the edge of the shape, drag out, and then click to plant the dimension, and that's 5. Right, so look, that one is centered here. If I just put a dimension on from the middle of that to here, you'll see that that's 10. It's grayed out because it's already locked in. The other one, where I didn't find that height, I don't think I'll be at 10. So look. Yeah, 8.747891 from there. Simple fix, press 10. There are other things I could do with concentrics and stuff, but that's a, that's a way of dimensioning. I think that's good practice. Okay, so let's just look at that in 3D for a second. I chose the face of this object to do that sketch and that sketch, but that one's floating a little bit. It doesn't matter for what we're doing because what we're going to do is we are going to extrude that one, uh, not that one, so I can take that away, that one, there we go, and I'm going to remove, and Onshape is intelligently saying let's take it through those parts again, I could only go through to the next face or all sorts of stuff, but I, I can go all the way through happily, green ticket. Right, so I've now got a part, look, part one. Let's be good, let's be organized. I'm gonna rename that. Let's call that um, long arm. Okay, now, in on shape, what you can do is you can actually draw the next component in the right position. Uh, I, again, I don't really like doing that always, so I'm actually gonna draw within the same part studio but I'm going to draw it near it and we're going to do the little small bit at the bottom so I'm going to still use the right work plane I just used the scroll wheel there by the way to zoom in and out I'll try not to do it, can you hear my squeaky mouse? <coughs> so I'm going to do a new sketch on the right work plane again press N for normal so I'm viewing straight onto it rectangle tool, click, drag dimension and again we're going to use the same sort of measurement so it's 20 wide uh, let's make it 40 tall and then we're going to use the radius tool the fillet 
sketch fillet tool sorry and click on a corner and look at that because we had 10 in our previous drawing it comes through as 10 and 10 green tick okay and then what I might do this time instead of drawing my hole separately let's put that on the sketch so if I go back into my sketch press N for normal this time I'll put that circle in at this moment so instead of putting it in afterwards we'll put it in there so dimension tool click drag five I'm putting five in because we're going to be using standard components of five mil um, metric um, probably Allen key bolts, socket head um, bolts, but socket head screws. 5mm. So there's a the sketch. So this sketch contains the hole. Now if I extrude it, 16, it's already got the hole in it. So that's kind of saving that lining up a hole process. It's two ways of doing the same thing. Okay, so now the next thing is back to doing that sketch which basically I'm going to be repeating this shape here so I go sketch I choose that face I press N to view onto it I go to my rectangle tool I'm going to hover around that middle yet yeah, got a middle line I'm not clicking anything there that's just the computer doing it for me previewing drag a rectangle out and then I'm going to dimension it from that line to that line 10 exactly the same as we did earlier okay so if you look at that sketch this is a few normal the sketch is bigger it's outside the shape so that when I when I remove material it removes that as well so we'll green tick that sketch we'll then extrude it making sure I get that bit and we're going to remove material over here green tick okay so again let's do rename that we'll call that one short arm why not long arm and short arm okay so now I've got the two components if I just come back to my assembly I believe it is this one no it's not it's that one okay we've got that part and we've got that part I think what I've done this time is I've made them 80 where these were longer We'll see how it turns out. So we'll look at putting those together in a minute. Um, let's just make this base, shall we? And we'll do that in the same part studio. If ever you get lost in, in on shape, you can always go click, click on the view cube up at the top right, and that will reorganize your views. Remember, you can also turn off visibility of things. You can turn off visibility of parts as well if you need to and turn them back on again. But if you find there's too many things, you can you can toggle those on and off. Right, so let's do this one. We're going to do a sketch on the top work plane. We're going to view normal, pressing N on the keyboard. Then I'm going to draw a square. Now this might be, certainly with the groups that I'm doing this with, uh, I'm going to be expecting them to maybe start off with the square but actually turn that into something more creative you know something challenging like a heart or a beautiful star <laughs> so let's dimension this uh, 57 let's make it 80 by 75 hmm. now let's go 80 by 80 we can always change it afterwards okay so there's my drawing my sketch rather, green ticket, extrude by, um, let's make it out of 12 mil plywood, let's say. Okay, now what I could do is I could do um, a taper on it and um, I could do all sorts of things, but let's let's keep it simple. So we're just, we're creating that green ticket. And let's put a hole in the bottom of it that we can put the base of that part into. So we will go sketch onto that top face, N view normal, so we're looking straight at it. Rectangle tool, position that there. 
Now again, there are tools up at the top that would allow us to align that. I'm gonna just do this by manually aligning it. So 16 mil wide by 20 mil thick. That's the size of this rectangle here. If I now click on there and click on the edge, that'll give me a measurement. Let's make that 30 for a minute. Click on there, give that a measurement. Let's make that 30 for a minute. If I now click here and click here, it's going to tell me that there's an issue. If I try and apply that, it's going to make it a gray one, which is what we call a driven dimension. It's shown me as 34, right? Now that's, that's quite handy because what I can do is I can go, okay, without doing any complicated maths, that one's 30, that one's 34. To even them up, I can make that one 32. Because that's a driven dimension, it will adjust. If you get those kind of red dimensions that come up, it's like an alert telling you that it's not working. So you can often convert to a driven dimension. So it'll tell you how big it is, but it won't actually push things around. Let's do the same thing up here. So we've got 30 at the bottom. Click there, 30. Right, that's nailed it. You can see it comes through as a gray one. And then a green ticket. Right, that's sort of disappeared. We're going to now extrude that. We're going to remove material. We're going to remove maybe six millimeters of depth rather than all the way through because it's a 12 mil piece of ply. And I'm going to green tick it. Now, if I was showing this as a machined part, I would probably add a radius onto these corners because we'd end up pocketing that out with a milling cutter or something like that. So you'd actually end up with a radius that wouldn't be square. But for now, let's keep it simple. Right, and then one final thing. I think we'll put a fillet on the edge, so I, a chamfer on the edge, sorry. And that's the chamfer tool. Let's give it a distance. Yeah, 10 mils, fine. I could choose the top, but it would then do a chamfer here. So easily enough, I can just click on these corners. And instead of it being a great chunky blocky square, it's now got a little bit of um, change of depth. That could be quite appealing, potentially. Uh, it's sometimes worth doing it underneath as well to create what we call a shadow gap. Those can be quite interesting. Right, so I've now got the majority of my, what I'm going to call my simple components, because I'm still a little bit nervous about this sheet material part. So let's create an assembly. We'll bring those together and um, make the next bit. Right, I'm going to create a new assembly. Down at the bottom left, you'll see I've got loads of things open where I've been messing about with it. I'm not going to close anything for a minute because I might want to show you the difference between what I produce and what I've got there. But along the bottom, you only really need, you would have a part studio where you make your parts. You would have an assembly where you put them together. Gives me a preview there. And you might have drawings and stuff. You can see where I've been kind of playing with different versions of things. Um, so we'll, we'll leave those open for a minute. Let's do plus sign, create assembly. So that's now assembly three. Let's do uh, rename assembly on shape. OS tut, on shape tutorial, boom, right. Nothing in there. So what we've got to do is we've got to insert our parts. Our parts are in Part Studio 6. Let's turn those off for a minute so we can see where we're looking. There's our parts. If I go to Assembly OS Tutorial and click on Insert, I think I can probably also do... Oh, no, I can't. Insert. It's going to say, where do you want me to get it from? I've got all these things open here. So look. In my Part Studio 6, I've got all those bits. I could bring them all in at once. I quite like bringing them in separately, so I'm going to do that. Part 3. And then I'm going to click. Let's just green tick this for a moment so I can bore you with some more information. You'll notice that what I did when I drew my objects, I kind of drew them the right way around. That works well for me. It doesn't always work in in practice you might forget you might be looking at things in a different way what I quite often do with my parts would be to look at the front view I use my view cube to kind of get it right so if I want to see the side of it I would click on the right one um, if you're dragging it around with the right mouse button you can't always 
tell exactly where you are whereas with the view cube you get a really clear view anyway that's now in position but here's an important thing if this is my main component or a really key one don't forget right click and fix it's probably something up at the top that can also do that but fix that means that that component doesn't matter what I do is now locked into position and when I add things to it it doesn't go floating off into space or twizzling around anything that's slightly misaligned I can lock to that one and that'll help pull everything together so let's now build our build our part okay so I've got the base insert in part studio let's bring in the short arm and click and let's bring in the long arm at the same time and click green tick right now these are able to move all over the place the other thing that you can do with these is if you click on a part you get these arrows here and they do a couple of things for you if you want to move it in one direction look you've got three axes that one will move it up and down that one will move it left and right backwards and forwards okay that's quite useful also if you want to flip something around you pull those arrows about sorry you pull the curvy arrows around and it would allow you to choose where you want that to be now that's quite good for getting it close but what you want to do in an assembly is you want to actually constrain it you want to lock it into position so that's what we'll do with this now mates I find quite confusing and I've done this in various bits of software but the trick is you need to kind of work out what you want to to mate against another thing so mates are your constraints in this case today I'm pretty much going to be using the planar mate planes are surfaces so I'm going to put one surface next to another surface and I'm going to be using the uh, I think the cylindrical mate the revolute mate and the cylindrical mate in some respects kind of work the same way for what we're doing but I'm going to use the cylindrical mate uh, because it's easier I think first thing I'm going to do here is make that object go into that hole so we go planar mate we choose I'm going to choose a surface let's choose let's make the bottom lock in first the bottom of that is going to lock to the bottom of the hole click green tick okay now that looks great doesn't it? it looks like it's done it all in one but if I drag that around you'll notice it can still move so what I do is I'm going to choose the side here and I'm going to lock it against that side there click to highlight it if it doesn't highlight you haven't selected it and then it gets a bit tricky sometimes it jumps around and you're not sure what's locking to what zoom in a bit click green ticket right so again you go oh, that's fantastic I've got it I've nailed it down but actually it's still able to move in that direction can't move up and down can't move left and right so the last thing I've got to do is I've got to choose that face there twizzle around hunt it down and click on that face there green tick okay now that object is fully constrained so I'm going to click solve on my make tool up at the left and then green tick that object is locked in position and because this object was locked into position in the beginning that was fixed there's the icon for it it means that that is now fixed against it that is really handy right so let's now have a go at this component so you can see what I want to do here is to make that face match that face I could in simple let's do this let's click on the part let's twizzle it around I promise not to say twizzle again I flipped it around 180 degrees then I'm going to put it roughly in position just to make it easier for myself and I'm going to go planar mate remember surface to surface which is that face there I'm going to lock it against that face there green tick all right so that can move around but again let's just look at it from the front I can try and move it around here but it's locked against that face there all right but now what I want to do let's let's solve that one green tick that one right we're gonna do a uh, 
cylindrical mate and we're going to choose that cylinder there and line that up with that cylinder there okay and then green ticket so you'll notice that it's still connected to that surface mate that was the planar mate but we've now got a cylindrical mate running through there and I'm going to solve that in green ticket. I'm going to ignore limit. Some of you might be going, go on, click a limit. I'm going to ignore those for a minute in green ticket. What the limits do is prevent it from going too far. So if you look, if this is a real object, it wouldn't be able to pass through the other object. All right, and the limits will lock that off. But I'm going to just leave that for a minute because I think we can come back to that later on. Right, so now, remember we're using the same part more than once. I'm going to go Insert, Part Studio, open that little arrow, bring another long arm in. Okay. And then green ticket. So this time, I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to choose Planar Mate. I'm going to choose that front face there. And that front face there green tick. So it doesn't look very good, does it? But actually those two are mating. Now, next job, to be able to move that around, to be able to pivot it around, I'm going to choose the, let's just move that slightly out of the way, I'm going to choose the cylindrical mate. That cylinder there is going to line up with that cylinder there green tick right looking any good it's confusing isn't it what it did is it lined the two up and it kind of looked like it was going to do it the wrong way around but actually it's done it absolutely fine I'm going to press solve over here and green tick and I should be able to pull it around to position it you can see where these limits are going to be important later on but again we'll come back to those as we go. So that moves up and down. That moves backwards and forwards, but they're always locked off face against face, cylinder against cylinder. Okay, now the next bit is kind of the necky bit. It's exactly the same component as that. So if we go insert, and choose the short arm. Come on, computer. Bring it in. Green tick. Okay, so look, remember I said to you that it's about repeating that, that same activity a lot of the time. This is exactly what I'm doing. I'm repeating this process, aren't I? So planar, mate. Click there. Click there. Green tick. Cylindrical, mate. There, there. Green tick. Solve. Hopefully. <laughs> too many things you can start to see how that pulls around what I did there which was a little bit silly I was getting a bit carried away is I did a cylindrical mate and I did a rev uh, whilst I was still in a planar mate seems to work got away with it I wasn't sure whether I was gonna have to do a bit of clever video editing to hide my error um, what I do notice down here on the left in the model tree it kind of it's it's telling me it isn't quite finished. It doesn't like what I've done. Um, to be fair, I should go back in and sort those. What I quite often do, don't tell anyone, is delete them and then test and say, has that worked? And generally speaking, it will be fine. If you're doing some proper engineering and you're building diggers and space rockets, don't just randomly delete something that's giving you a warning error. But for me, it's because I'm terrible at doing my, my mates. There are better techniques than I sometimes use, but that works. Right, so the next bit um, is where we're going to make the top part of our lamp. And we're going to do that in our part studio again, part studio six. I hope I'm going to do it here. And I'm going to create a shape, which is going to be a sketch on the top work plane. Remember I'd hidden the work planes? I've just toggled that back on again so I can see it. 
So this sketch is going to go on that work plane. I'm going to press N for view normal. And we're going to make the um, the the kind of the shade, if that's the right word for it, the, the the sort of decorative feature on the end of it, which would be made out of acrylic. And I'm going to do that with a flat profile first of all. Um, slightly made up numbers here. Now what I'm doing, this is quite interesting. I'm I'm sort of identifying a point that I'm maybe going to align up with. Um, and it will automatically pop down and give me a kind of preview. I'm looking at that and thinking that might make quite a decent center line. I'm going to do half the artwork and then I'm going to mirror it, I think, and see if that works. So this neck has to sit over the top of one of my arms. The arms are 16 millimeters wide. I'm going to make that 21. All right, now what it does is that that's the only measurement on there. So by doing that, it scales the whole thing up proportionally, but that's going to be too big for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that height down a bit. And I think we'll make the whole lens about 80 mil. So I'm going to start start by writing 80. I'm going to escape my dimension for a minute. I'll press the escape key. I think I can also usually right click and escape. And I'm going to just pull that line down a bit. Then I'm going to go to a dimension over here and let's do uh, 30. And I think we'll, let's see if I can move that as an angle, that's looking better. Right, so then I'm going to dimension, let's dimension here, we'll make that 20. And let's put a an angular dimension on here. I'll make that 130. See if it does it. Might not like it. Right, that looks alright. Right, then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a sheet metal part. So that's 80, that's 30. Um, let's make that 40. Just see what happens. Yeah, that'll be better. I'm going to just shrink this down. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking as I'm doing this. That's 21. Now I'm going to mirror this. If I if I mirrored 21, I would end up with 42. So I'm going to actually shrink that down to um, 11, so that I can mirror that sketch. Hopefully. That looks all right to me. So if I go mirror, select a mirror line, it tells me. So that's going to be my mirror, my axes of reflection. Then it's saying what you want to mirror. That, 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 and that. Okay, so that's that's that part mirrored. And I'm going to green tick that. Okay. Now sometimes I would turn that, let's do this, on that sketch, sketch 8, I'm going to just edit it, I don't actually think I need to here but I'm going to do it anyway, I'm going to right click on that and change that to a construction line. So that means this is my profile that I would extrude, that would be my construction line, I think it would have worked anyway but let's green tick that. Now this is where I'm sort of newish to this bit of, bit of work so I'm going to have to be a little bit... Um, careful with it. I'm going to choose sheet metal model. I'm going to thicken this part, I think. Yeah. And I'm going to thicken it to 1.6. I'm going to thicken it to 3. Which is quite thick. If that was sheet metal, that'd be way too thick. All right. And then I'm going to green tick that. Right. <clears throat> Again, I'm hoping that I get this right now. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to... So that now, on shape is now thinking that this is a sheet metal part. I'm going to flange 
and I'm going to just choose an edge, right? And it's going to come up 25 mil. Let what if I do 45? It becomes really tall. What if I do 20? Much shorter. I'm going to go with 20. I'm going to go with 30. Green tick. Okay. So still, and that appears there. I wonder if I can. If I go into the flange, can I choose more than one? Still within that flange. Okay, so now we're getting a sheet metal part. Okay, and I think what I'll do is I'll just green tick that. And that's not a bad little shade actually let's just change the color of that I'm not going to make it transparent yet so part four let's rename part four uh, I'll call it shade so part shade over here it's, it's sort of a lamp shade a reflector let's make that a nice orange color and green tick Right. Now that's probably something you might want to watch again, but basically what I started on, and we're going to keep going for a second, I started by creating, let's come down on the top, basically a sketch profile of that, and I then converted it to, sorry, I then went to the flange and clicked on edges to create that part. Now again, I think there's a bit of playing around to do with this. Um, to really perfect it and add bits on and stuff but uh, but it'll get too complicated so we'll leave it that for a minute I am gonna do a sketch on it in a minute oh I know what I can show you I'm gonna show you about how you add a work plane in because I think this is really useful all right and it'll allow me to do a sketch and then extrude it on a work plane so let's do up here work plane or planes here next to it is the op Right, so sorry, here's planes, click on that, and it's gonna be mid plane. Okay, and I what I can do is I can choose that surface there and that surface there, and it will give me one in between those two. Alright, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna green tick that. There's plane one. Rename it mid plane. Okay, so there's my part, there's my mid plane that I've added in, which I think is going to be quite useful. And I've got over here the sheet metal view, which I haven't shown you yet. Right, and what's what's really good about this is it shows you what that would be if it was a flat component. Where you've got these cuttings, that's to allow sheet metal to bend up and fold up. Same thing with acrylic. Right, now that will actually export as a, as something that our laser cutter can follow. I'm looking at my angles on that flange and I just don't really quite like it. I'm just going to have a quick look for a second and see if I can add, um, make a change to it. I don't like it. So I'm going to come back into my flange here. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to change that angle to, uh, let's change it to 60 degrees. And you see how that begins to open up that part? That's a much nicer shape, isn't it? 60 degrees, where previously it was 90. Notice how everything is updating here. Let's go back to 60. Definitely leaving it like that, much better. All right, so there's my sheet metal part, and that'll kind of do for a minute, but then we'll come back onto that mid plane for a second, because I want to show you that. I can just hide this for a second. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a sketch on this mid plane now. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to hide the top plane so you can't see it. And I'm going to hide those parts a second so you don't see those. So you can just concentrate on this. All I've done is I've just toggled them off there. Right, so I'm going to go sketch. 
I'm going to choose mid plane. No, it's gone to the wrong one. Let's do that again. Sketch. Doesn't want to do it. Let's choose mid plane over here. Just in case you missed that. So that was sketch. It wouldn't choose, it wouldn't highlight because there's so much going on here. There we go. But I was able to select it over in the model tree over on the left. Let's choose it there, though. And view normal. Right, now I'm not going to do anything particularly wild here. I just want to show you this because I think this is really good. All right, you can actually design within that part. So remember I'm working in the middle here. Although it looks like I'm, I'm going to just do a random shape. There you go, that's what a design degree gets you, the ability to make shapes like that. So there's my sketch, but look, it looked like I was drawing on the side there. It's actually on that mid plane. If I green tick now, what I'm going to do, can you guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to extrude that part, that sketch rather, removing material symmetrically, left and right, through this okay god that is an ugly shape i've made but i want to show you with the with the sheet metal object in position so i'm extruding i'm removing but as i punch through that sheet metal side it actually makes the holes in the flat work there and you can preview it now you're more likely to be doing it in fact, you know what? I'm not going to leave that shape there. I don't like it. Right, I'm going to do that whole bit again. But you see the see the principle. So normally this would be something like a a, a box that ho houses a fan or a motor or something. So um, on that mid plane, I'll do a different sketch because that was too horrible to look at. Um, so I'd go N for normal. Let's choose a circle. Let's do another one lined up with it. A circle circle and a circle Ooh. now again I could do all sorts of clever measurements here I could use a pattern but we'll keep it to what we're doing so I'm gonna make that dimension 8 so let's make that dimension 8 and then dimensions We'll just give them a diameter. Four looks good. Okay. So there's those holes. So we then extrude those. Removing material symmetric so if you watch the, the sketch the, um, the the 2d object there as I pull it through it gives me that shape much better now what's interesting and what I really like about this that you will probably not care about whatsoever is when I pulled my circle through an angled feature because it was pulling through at an angle, it's given me these sort of elliptical shapes. And what's really important about that is that the hole is as though it's been drilled through at 90 degrees or punched through if it was sheet metal, okay? And that's exactly what you'd get if you were cutting it um, with, a, with a laser cutter going through at 90 degrees. What you wouldn't get, which is slightly inaccurate, is, is your circles wouldn't become ellipses if you were doing your circles on there with a laser cutter and then folding it up. But I quite like that as a as an outcome. Right, so I'm going to call it a day on that. So if I close my view there, that's the shade part of it. Bit complicated doing that sheet metal, but really well worth it because if you think about things like boxes and drawers and trays and stuff like that, that's how you do it. One last thing I'm going to do, let's take it into the assembly. So 
clicked on the assembly at the bottom, I go insert part studio six. <laughs> Let's do control Z on that. There we go, right. Insert shade, that's what I should have done. Click on it. It's a bit of a tank, isn't it? Green tick. So now we'll just rotate that roughly. 180 would be better, wouldn't it? Okay, and then put that in position. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to that component there. So that would be a planar mate on the bottom to the top of that, a green tick. And then I think we will do a planar mate there so that it lines up with the back of that part. Green tick that. And then we're going to do a planar mate that locks that to that. Green tick it. But what I'll do with that one. I hope is offset it by nine and see what happens. Uh, nothing. Let's edit that one, sorry. Offset that. There we go. So I've offset it by nine. It was I'd, for some reason I'd added an extra mate in there. Uh, I've offset it by nine, knowing full well it was going to pull it out too far, and so I can now just go back in and change that nine to three. And there we've got a better lined up mate. So I've locked off against the back edge of that. I've locked off against the side of that but then offset it. I moved it across to line up with that and that now gives me my shade. Let's view onto it a little bit better. Okay. And I can pull that around. Now, again, we could play with the limits on this a little bit. But I actually think that does a quite a decent job of giving me a shade. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into Part Studio 6. And instead of it being a solid metal, that looks about a bit like, to me, that's anodized aluminium or potentially powder coated steel or something in a nice 80s BMX color. Let's go to that appearance panel and then go to shades and instead of it being orange and solid I'm going to just bring the A down that is the alpha right that's a, a transparency your alpha okay so now that looks like we can see through it a little bit and if we go back to our assembly we've now got a transparent lid shade on top of it all right, and I really want to pull that down a bit. It's, it's annoying me. <laughs> Physically, that would be easy to move. Now, obviously, what what we'll do in in our engineering or design and technology would be to put some sort of friction fit in there. So that'll be our five millimeter bolts, maybe with wing nuts or something similar. Um, one final thing I want to do before I move off and, and say we, we'll call it a day. We'll do, we'll do another one where we talk about doing a drawing, but I wanted to just show you this because this is directly related to the sheet metal part. You can at this point right click and you can export a DXF or you can create a drawing of the flat pattern. And I've tested this and what you can do, the drawing will allow you to drop the flat version into your orthographic drawing which is really important for showing the details of your design. If you export a DXF or a DWG, the DXF can then be used usually to drive a laser cutter. And you'd literally click on that and give it a proper name, save it somewhere good, 
and you can maybe get rid of some of these sort of center lines and stuff like that. That's worth a bit of an experiment with according to what you're doing. But basically that then creates for you from a solid model CAD artwork that can be used to drive your laser cutter. Right? It's also worth noting, I'm going to show you this because I love this. There's my assembly, right? I'm going to right click on my assembly, I'm going to go export and I'm going to choose 3MF okay and export that will hopefully appear in my downloads if I then go to PowerPoint I can go insert 3D models from this device uh, do, 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 do. hopefully my downloads assembly OS tut and insert right interesting eh that now gives me a view in my PowerPoint doesn't look very interesting does it but click on that and your PowerPoint document has suddenly got the ability can I duplicate it I wonder copy uh, paste you can suddenly now show multiple views of your object. Now Orange Shape's not very good at rendering. Um, so it's not it's not perfect. It's not like it's coming out of Fusion or, or SolidWorks or Autodesk Inventor. Um, but it's pretty good. You know, it's lost its transparency there. And I believe you can take that into um, Microsoft uh, 3D Paint as well to play around with. And you can 3D print. Just saying. Right. Good luck with that.